In a kind of creepy story out of New York City, a federally funded organ donation program was launched last week in that city in hopes of recovering more human organs. A team of two EMTs, an organ donor family services specialist, and an emergency doc will begin monitoring 911 calls from people in danger of dying. Upon receiving a call, the team will travel to the home, consult grieving family members, and try to obtain consent from them to have their loved one's organs donated. While this seems rather unsavory, it does work to address a rather serious problem in this country, the huge need for organ transplants and the lack of organ donors. Of the 50,000 people who died just in downstate New York hospitals last year, only 261 were donors. And in the entire country, 6,500 people die every year because no organ is available to them. With currently more than 100,000 people awaiting organ donations in the United States, is this new organ donor wagon riding around the streets of New York a good idea? Wesley Smith is a senior fellow in human rights and bioethics at the Discovery Institute. He's also the author of numerous books, including A Rat as a Pig as a Dog as a Boy, The Human Cost of the Animal Rights Movement. Wesley, welcome. Hi, Tom. How are you? Good. Good. I hope you're well. Discovery hey, Institute. This is my this is my first Skype, thanks to you. Oh, great. Okay. Well, welcome to the 21st century here. That's it, uh, yeah. The Discovery Institute is most well known for trying to get creationism and religion into our public school textbooks and denying global warming. What does organ donation have to do with uh, creationism or the interests of the people who fund your organization? Well, first off, it has nothing to do with the people who fund the Discovery Institute, and I'm not involved in the uh, issue of uh, intelligent design. Uh, you asked me to be on this program because I deal with bioethics. And this program uh, of organ, the organ wagon, uh, it has a nice concept in terms of wanting to increase organ donation, but it's utterly impractical. Think about what has to be done within 20 minutes. The uh, team has to find a, an emergency call where somebody is suspected of having a cardiac arrest. They have to go to where the death is. They have to bring a police detective to make sure it's not a crime scene. They have to uh, then make sure it was uh, really a heart attack. Uh, they also have to uh, uh, talk to the grieving pair of, uh, family members, as you mentioned, uh, and all within 20 minutes. It, it takes 20 minutes to get from 33rd Street to 50th Street in Manhattan. Yeah, so the whole thing. on the day in the traffic. No, I don't disagree. Yeah. Wesley, uh, the bottom line here. I mean, in in one of your op eds, you talked about how there is no uh, social contract essentially associated with our bodies. That nobody else in our society has the right to claim our bodies. Are you opposed because you think that organ donation should be run by for-profit companies and hospitals instead of the evil big government? You really got to get away from these conspiracy theories. Well, Tom. I read it in your op-ed. By the way, <laughs> Tom, I'm an organ donor. It's on my uh, my license here. You can take a look. Sure. Are you an organ donor? Uh, yes. Very good. So we have an, a point of agreement. I believe that organ donation is important, and I believe that the organ donation system should be ethical. When it was established, it was said that it would be done with complete consent and only on dead bodies. I'm all in favor of that, and that's why I'm an organ donor on my driver's license. But you have, uh, you have 24 nations in Europe that say you have to, on the back of your driver's license, say, I don't want my organs harvested when I die, right. rather than I do. You and I have said right. I do. But, you right. know, in, in Spain, in France, and in 22 other countries in Europe, people have to say, I don't. Are you suggesting right. that people should be able to opt out of wearing bike helmets and seat belts and only sign the back of the driver's license if they want to do that or having brake lights on their cars? Well, that's not quite the same thing at all. Uh, people, the government does not own our bodies. Uh, and they made some very important and firm promises to convince a very wary public to go along with the idea of organ donation in the first place. We're becoming a, a country of public policy promise breaking. Why should we break promises made to people? And by the way, so distrust in health care. Are you telling me with the cost cutting that's going on, that if it was an a, uh, opt-out system rather than an opt-in system, uh, 
that people with uh, loved ones in very serious situations and very serious conditions wouldn't worry that both the money imperative in terms of cost cutting and the desire to get that organ wouldn't affect their health care. I think they would work I, it I, if it was a corporate run program. Yeah, I'd be worried about it. But if I, it, I if think it they is... would worry about it if it was corporate or government run but, program. But those, the, the countries where it is, they don't worry about it. Now, Israel, for example, is incentivizing organ donations if, although they have an opt-in rather than opt-out program. But if you opt in, you move to the top of the list should you ever need an organ. In Singapore, if you opt in, you get a waiver on hospital fees and funeral charges. How about a middle ground? Well, what would you suggest? Well, any of the above that I just mentioned. I, I don't think we should be uh, purchasing organs at all. What I do think, though, is we do need to get more people to be organ donors. You know, one of the reasons we are, uh, you mentioned helmets. Uh, one of the reasons we have uh, fewer organs available is because, thanks to Ralph Nader, in my view, uh, we have uh, good auto safety laws, good helmet laws that are preventing the kind of head injuries that often lead to organ donation. Uh, we also uh, have, very interestingly, advances in uh, transplant medicine which have allowed more people uh, to benefit from organ donations. Uh, we need to increase the organ uh, supply, but we should not do it in a way that is unethical. We do not want to turn our society but into if our, one. But if our government has is, the right to force us to wear seat belts and, and helmets, why would it not have the right to say, you know, when you die, you're dead, and your organs are going to save other people's lives? You, you typically take a pro-life position. You were certainly gung-ho on this with regard to Terry Schiavo. Isn't this a pro-life thing? Well, I don't think it's pro-life or not pro-life. What I think it is is keeping ethical uh, constraints on health care and keeping ethical constraints on organ donation. You want to destroy the people's faith in organ donation. Just follow your, your prescription. It will, you will see people lining up to opt out. It has not done that in other countries. This is America. This isn't Europe. And so we have a whole different we're, idea we're of individualism. You, we're, well... I, okay. Sorry, you have to deal I, with, the, with the country as it is, and this country, as it is, will not accept an opt-out system. We're a nation full of paranoids. Okay. What? Well, uh, just because you're paranoid, Tom, doesn't mean they're not really after you. There you go. Thank <laughs> you, Wesley. I appreciate your dropping by tonight. Thanks, and Tom. Welcome, welcome to Skype. Other countries have tackled this problem by creating an opt-out system for organ donations. In other words, if you die, your organs are automatically donated unless you previously opted out. As I mentioned, 24 European countries, including Spain, Belgium, and Austria, have an opt-out system and much higher rates of organ donation. I think it's time we adopt the opt-out system, and then the creepy organ wagons now operating in New York City will no longer be necessary. But there's a larger position here. There's a larger argument here. And this is, this is what Wesley was talking about when he said, you know, Americans are different from Europeans. We're paranoid. Well, it's not that we're paranoid. It's that this, this libertarian notion that society doesn't exist, that we're independent of society, that it's just, it's just me, the rugged individual, really has permeated much of American life. This, this, uh, our bodies are not part of society. But the reality is that we're social animals, like all other mammals. If human beings are raised without society, they become, the, as children, they become totally dysfunctional. They're not capable of functioning. They're not capable of surviving. Adults, all alone, without society, without the, without the infrastructure of society, die. I mean, it's, it's just, it's very simple. We are organized as a society. We are social people. And so if we're part of society, I think that you can safely argue that we are, to a certain extent, our brother's keeper, to paraphrase the Bible. And as such, if our brothers are useful in our death, or we're obligated, or if our bodies, rather, are useful in our death, we're obligated to share. And frankly, in my opinion, the most efficient facilitator of that would be a nonprofit institution that's fully answerable to you and me. We created that in, in the 1780s. It's called the United States of America.